This podcast is for adults only, should not be used as a meal replacement, and may contain nuts. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Newbie and the Doobie. My name is Timmy. I am the newbie. Mary Jane, I am the doobie. We are very excited to have with us back on the show as a second, second returnees, yeah. Alexis and Jolene, otherwise known as Blunts and Beans. I still haven't figured out who's the Blunts and who's the Beans, but I'm the thank you so much. You're, yes, you are the doobie. Nice, nice shirt, by the way. Thank I you. feel like I need to point out she's a doobie, not the doobie. That's right. There's only one the doobie. <laughs> Wait, do the shirts say the doobie? No, it's just no, say it says doobie. a doobie. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Yes, All right. I thought we had messed that one up. The doobie. <laughs> and uh, I'm assuming, Alexis, yours was lost in the mail. Is that how it's worked? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it was lost. <laughs> okay. All right. Or maybe we... she just wore it so much because she loved yeah. it and it's just, it's gone. Well, we, we really appreciate you guys being back on the show. And uh, there's so there's uh, there's so much to talk about um, that we didn't get to talk about last time. Uh, for those that are tuning in, though, and maybe didn't watch the last episode, let's just make it very clear. Um, it's kind of split down the middle here. Jolene and, and myself are besties and Alexis and MJ are besties. So is it, there is a little is bit true. of a there's a little bit of a relational um, see, divide going on. And if you notice, I got to sit next to my bestie. Yes, she I wanted she wanted that. to sit beside. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to I'm going to have to reach over. Hi. <laughs> No. You. <laughs> oh, you guys are too much. cute. <laughs> it's funny. You guys decided that very early on. You're like, Jolene, you're my bestie. Yeah. And there was no question because Alexis, I was like, yeah, yeah. I want Jolene anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this. Oh as, I'm this, kidding. I love you, Jolene. This show, man, I love this, you. this show is starting off like no other show has. Um, so, like, before we get into. Uh, questions about life in general um is there anything because we are gonna we're gonna put this thing up uh probably a couple days after we're recording it's about to go up because you guys got big things yeah that's the fastest i'm gonna say i'm ever gonna be able to edit and then get it uploaded because i'm like we got news well we don't have news you got news that we want to like and we want people we want people to know that this we're going to talk more about this later in the episode Mm -hmm. but give the um Give kind of that that three minute elevator pitch to the tell elevator. people what it is that we're gonna that we're that we are gonna talk about later on. What is coming up? Just to kind of you know stir the pot up a little bit. Do you want to be the music? Or I'll, be the uh, music. I'll be the music. Okay, you got it. Music. All right. So in precisely seventeen sleeps, we'll be having the best, most fun weekend. Camp Canada twenty twenty three is coming. We're getting together. We are having responsible, dignified consumption. We're having fun. We're celebrating culture. And it's really a nice opportunity to get to know some legal brands as a consumer, to build some nice relationships with them. But mostly it's just to get together and um, celebrate how far the cannabis community has come because there's so many cool things that we are able to do today that we were not five years ago. Um, So, yeah. That's that's what we got coming right. up. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we, we will talk about more about specifics on that. Um, just I caught right away though. How do you put together responsible, dignified, and fun? <laughs> how is where's the line? How there? Do you come out? Can you cover all the subjects? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So the, the is like the dignified time, like the Friday night. Yeah, you schedule them the at different times, the Saturday. maybe different locations. <laughs> Really dignified consumption just means like in an area that is stigma free where you're not being judged or looked down upon or Or feeling like you need to be over there in the corner in a smoke pit where you can't see anything or you're not part of anything, which was really an injustice that we felt when we went to cannabis events where we had to, you know, step outside the venue into the back alley to consume, you know what I mean? So having dignified consumption, you don't have to step away from anything. You want to sit there. We're out in nature. We're in open air. We're enjoying people's company. It's, you know, it's not an area where we like, okay, in this box. (laughs) So yeah. Is there, is there a place though, for people like me who are very judgmental and I would like to judge people? (laughs) 
Yeah, right in know. the midst of it. <laughs> no, you you can sit there in the middle no. of all of it. Okay. And watch everybody and yeah. judge. You don't want to be because... judgy and you just want to people watch mm-hmm. as a non-consumer. Yes. You're welcome to come too. Last okay. year, 10% of our pass holders were actually non-consumers. Mm-hmm. And they just came to have a good really? time. And to learn the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for some education. Like in the places that are governed today. There's no education able to be given. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of some people are curious, even if they're not consuming themselves like you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, although yeah. MJ tried to give me a uh, a teapot, um, <laughs> the, lemon, the, the lemon, the lemon iced, iced tea. tea. Yeah, I, that's we, infused. We picked it up from Tokyo Smoke and I was like, crack it open and I smell it. And it literally it smells just like nest tea, iced tea. And I'm like, come on. Like, do you think one sip? One sip wouldn't yeah. get too high, would it? Yeah, she just was, like a sip. It was peer pressure, peer pressure all over the place. Have you so, ever accidentally done that though? Like giving him something and been like, this is so good. You have to try it, getting wrapped mm. up. And <laughs> you're gonna talk. I know she exactly. Did, she didn't accidentally give me something, but above her stove, it's not there anymore. There I was a say. bottle of oil of which I was going to cook with. Because I'm a progressive male. So I yeah, see, went to grab the oil <laughs> and she was like, no. No, it was in the it was in the pan. He had already put it in the pan and he's heating up the pan. And I was like, what oil did you use? And he's like, huh? And I was like, that one. I was like, no, no. I grabbed the pan. I was like, yeah. no. Toss the pan in the sink. I grab a new pan. He's like, what are you doing? I was like, that's cannabis oil. Yeah. He's like, why is it next to the other oil? Why is it not labeled? I was like, it is labeled. He says, She's like, where? Who, who where is grabbed... it labeled? And he's looking yeah. at the bottle. For the person who complains about cannabis labeling all the time, and she was like, well, who just picks up someone's oil and pours it? And it's like, how about the guy who wants to eat dinner and he's been staying here at the house? In all fairness, the labeling that I had was it was a chalkboard shelf, and the label was on the chalkboard. It said. <laughs> It said pink Kush cannabis oil and it had an arrow to that bottle. So if the so, bottle because the bottle's always going to be right in that. Maybe, spot. Hey, my kids know not to use that. I figured <laughs> that he would like oh. it would have been a fun night for sure. A fun day. That was breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough about us. Um Okay, no, so... I would never purposely dose anybody, although I do think it would be fun. Well, it's not purposeful, make... that's an accident. Well, right. I think it would be Happy fun one. to make a bunch of cookies or brownies or whatever it is, but make all of them like 90% of them just regular cookies and then 10% of them, infused. you know, like, like infused roulette. cannabis roulette. Mm-hmm. And everybody yeah. knows, everybody will know, you know, like 10% of these have cannabis in it. Mm-hmm. Have fun. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready for that game. No, but everybody has to know, or else it's no fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, it won't be a good game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we don't no. want to go. We don't want to go through your whole history again because we covered that in in the episode, and you guys should go look look at that episode. But yes, we did hear the first stories. We do want to hear a little bit about kind of um, the extension of that journey, and maybe start with with how you guys kind of got together the vision of Blunts and Beans kind of in a, in that condensed journey. And then as this relationship, both professionally and um, personally, has unfolded over the last year or so since we had last talked, um, talk to us a little bit about that cannabis journey individually and together. That's a lot. That's a, that's a whole lot. <laughs> you want us to just debrief a year. Yeah. <sighs> Start in January and go from there. I mean, we have had a crazy, beautiful year. Incredible. Incredible uh, year. Bless. The... We've been blessed by the ganja gods. Yes. My friends. I often say that sometimes, you know, because we're in the hustle and bustle of it all and we're doing something that's there's no like guidebook, you know, <laughs> there's not exactly a book that's like, do this and this will happen, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like I always often say that we need to look at the trophies on the shelf. Because even no matter how big and small they are, like there's still trophies on the shelf. So like, you know, we're hitting our head against the government on all levels, like doing what we're doing. You know what I mean? And so some days we're like, ugh, 
this is tough, but we have a lot of trophies on the shelf from this year. Like I got an opportunity to speak with our premier earlier in the year um, and kind of bring to her attention cannabis tourism and what that looks like. And she was able to like share her personal opinion with me and that she sees cannabis as like a medicine plant. And she believes that the guidelines and regulations in Alberta are too strong right now. Um, And I don't want to take like credit or anything, but the first thing she did as she got reelected was moved AGLC, which is our governing body of cannabis and liquor, um, underneath the red tape reduction minister away from the finance minister, which is huge for anybody operating a business in Alberta. So like that's crazy, huge trophy on the shelf there. Um, (laughs) But yeah, really, it's just been like crazy how organically like how everything has just happened organically this year. Like it was just a matter of like, oh, hey, like, would you guys be interested in doing this? Like we, well, like just the world's think, largest a, doobie. A, a year ago when we were on your podcast, that mm-hmm. was the first podcast we had ever been on. Yeah. And right. since then, I mean, we've publicly spoken at a couple of events. Mm-hmm. We've been to Toronto. We were mm-hmm. in Edmonton yeah. at Grow Up. So we've been around and, uh, yeah, Vancouver. Was well, you back. guys, you guys okay. even did your own podcast too. Yeah, we have our yeah. own show now. We're on yeah. summer yeah. break because We're on summer like break good for you. Summer break. It's hot mom summer right. here. Yeah. So. <laughs> good for you. You need to know when to like. You know, we were talking about that with uh, somebody, another guest. We had we had reached out to them. And we're like, we really want to get you on the show, and they're like, well, we'd love to, but. Same thing. It's summer vacation. We'll deal with you. No, with, the, the, with the high ladies. You guys yeah. know the high ladies podcast. Oh, yeah. I love the high ladies. Love the high ladies. Yeah. High ladies. Yeah. yeah. We, we actually, will have... I stole their lighter by accident at the Can Expo, and I still have it. Her green lighter. I will bring it back to her one day. <laughs> and I have it, and I need to give it back. But oh, the, no, they're great. Well, we we met you. We met you guys in person. Yeah. Um, yeah. At uh, I still have the my event? lighter though. Can Expo? Yeah. The Can yeah. Expo. Um, yeah. And I, I my lighter. Well, no, I, I right now is just clicking because remember when we left that after we had given you guys hugs goodbye and I was like, like I was missing stuff out of my pockets and I was like, I was like, I That's must funny have dropped because it. As soon as we got there, we didn't even make it inside. They nailed us with hugs before we even went in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows what we lost? And no, I know. And, and I know. Bum, bum, bum. Jolie was so handsy, and I was like, "Wait a minute, wait, what's gone?" <laughs> That's not what you were like. It's a really cool thing. <laughs> well, we can. Our whole world is about rumors. That's how these things sell. All right, let's make up a good one. Then. All right. <laughs> so, okay, but blunts and beans, like when we had talked to you guys, you know, like it initially was, started with a subscription it was, yeah, box. Yeah, like you guys are doing yeah. little subscription boxes, and now yeah. you're talking about meeting the premier and running like this, you know, this huge, Can- you know, camp tourism. Canna event. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. like that, that might have all been kind of there in the initial discussions a year ago, but I mean, moving from kind of this subscription service that has coffee and and cannabis to like this you know provincial if not going on you know a national vision Mm -hmm. uh, that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of progression in in one year it's definitely not lazy stoner you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. we uh we like to get stuff done and uh not only that but the when we had the subscription box We wanted to have a coffee shop. We wanted to have the experience Mm -hmm. we were giving people in the box in real life in a little cafe that we had loved, lived at, and we had our whole little movie moment. And that's just not possible. And it got Mm -hmm. to a point where we were tired of waiting for someone else to do it. And we're doers. So Mm -hmm. we put our mind to it and we've been chipping away at it and we've been making a ripple and it's slowly turning into a wave. So that's been cool to see. Um, Mm -hmm. Just last week, we sat down with our premier as Alexis or our MLA MLA Mm -hmm. for this area. And when we sat down with him, like our goal going into that meeting was we wanted to set a standard for our area 
and we were going to start picking at him because, you know, we've talked provincially. We are on boards that are talking to federal government. Mm -hmm. So we needed to get to our local guy. And so it was really crazy when we stepped in there and he loved everything we were saying. He was on board. But not only that, he didn't want to make these changes just in the municipality. He wants to set a standard for Alberta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think otherwise we're just jumping the hoops again and again Mm -hmm. in each region Mm -hmm. as opposed to being a unified front. And it like maybe sounds a lot different, you know, (laughs) a subscription box to like where we're at now. But I think like on a very level, like foundation, like Jolene said, like we're moms, but we parent in a way where we provide experiences to our children and we bring that through into our business a lot because we want to provide experiences for people where they feel welcome, where they feel dignified, where they feel good and like, you know, where they can feel celebrated at the end of the day. And we're so lucky to have the supportive community that we have that's kind of just opened the doors and let us provide this experience for them. Because like last year, when I was calling people to ask them to help with Camp Canna, I first had to tell them what Camp Canna was mm-hmm. and like what it, I know it, I know we never done it yet, but we're gonna, and it's going to be great. And like, you know what I mean? It was a completely different conversation last year versus this year. They're reaching out to us. They know what Camp Canna is. They've mm-hmm. seen it with their own hands. They see the vision and people have bought into that vision now. So, I mean, that's just like, it's crazy. Like when I think of like, I, you know, I truly hope we can get you guys there because the growth from last year to this year, just in the event is like astronomical. And it honestly could not be that much growth if it weren't for our supportive community. Like we have spreading the word. people screaming from the mountaintops for us. And it's just like, if it weren't for them, if they it would be like not even comparable. It's so amazing. It's but so good. Not only them, but our <laughs> community and our herd at home. Like yeah. we wouldn't be able to do what we do without the support system we have. Like we have five kids mm-hmm. between the two mm-hmm. of us who are between six and 13. So, mm-hmm. you know, they still like to have us around mm-hmm. sometimes. Occasionally. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're definitely blessed when it comes to a support system who mm-hmm. believes in us going after our dreams. Yeah. So what, okay, so I, there's a couple of things. Number one is the the whole thing of uh, a lot of moms might have these same sort of visions, but they, uh, I hear this term a lot. I'm just a mom. Yeah. And I don't have the time. You guys, you guys though, seem to express that, you know, cause I, I think just anything needs to be pulled mm-hmm. away when people, they, they, they limit themselves by doing that. Yeah. Um, was that a hurdle for you initially to be able to get past that person on personal level for both of you to go, I'm not just a mom, I can do this. I think this is something that we have to deal with every single day. Like, you know what I mean? Like this is at the end of the day, they're children and they're only going to be children for so long. Like, I know that that's something that like I have, um, a separated house. Like my daughter goes to spend time with her dad. And so I don't feel as guilty as maybe, and I shouldn't speak for you, but I don't feel as guilty as maybe Jolene does leaving her children who are used to her being in their home 24 seven and never away from her. Right. So like, I feel like we go through very different experiences as being working moms. Um, But for me as a working mom is I look at it as when my daughter grows up and has children, I want her to see that literally nothing is unattainable because you can do everything you can either use it as an excuse or as your reason why i was my mom was 15 when she got pregnant with me a lot of my childhood upbringing was well don't get pregnant because your whole life will be over and like you know what i mean like that whole like rhetoric but my life is not over because i'm a mom i'm a whole ass person over here (laughs) and she will grow into being such a better person because she sees me be my authentic self and not just the mother figure you know what i mean so so if you're you're four if you're four foot two and blind you'll never be in the nba i don't care how much people say follow your dreams (laughs) 
You never know. <laughs> Watch me. <laughs> you never know. There's the, positivity. Yeah, there's the positivity. I don't know. I think if we all concentrated on the fact that we're supposed to be unique individuals who leave our mark on this world, it could be a better place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes it is hard to juggle. Mom guilt is a real thing. I think whether they're a newborn or 30 years old, you're still going to have those moments. Mm -hmm. But you're still your own person at the end of the day, and you need to do stuff for you because that's important too. Mm -hmm. And I super love that everything we do, a lot of the time it's with the kids yeah. because we are kind of moms and we do raise them mm -hmm. without a stigma around the plant. It's just another plant we grow. It's mm -hmm. our medicine. They know about it. They mm -hmm. choose yeah. right now. They they have no interest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just the plant. Mm -hmm. They're not gardeners. Man, they love Camp Canada. They think Camp Canada is the coolest place in the world. They wish they could be there too. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They've mm -hmm. even come up with their own ideas about having like a kids camp next door for the kids. Like, nice. you know what I mean? Like they're like in it and well, it's exciting. They get mad that. because they're, they help us with everything we do. So they see our growth. Like mm -hmm. when we were in the Catalyst Project, they thought we were in a museum. Yeah. And like, I cried a little bit because seeing ourselves through their eyes, like I didn't picture it like that. Like it was a beautiful movement. And I was so proud of us 33 women for standing up and telling our story together in such mm -hmm. an authentic, beautiful way. But the kids in their eyes, they seen it as like, you're in a museum, in a gallery, <laughs> in the mall. You're famous. You're famous. <laughs> yes. You know, so it's nice to have their light shining in there too sometimes. And like yeah. stepping out of our comfort zone, like Jolene has stepped so far out of her comfort zone this year. Let's give this girl some props I'm because she is an introvert. And like not a public speaker and not a, you know, she would get like anxiety before mm -hmm. we would do our first show, like so much anxiety, but she just powers mm -hmm. through it. Like she's grown so much just as a person, you know? And like oh, that yeah. speaks wonders to Thanks. the show. So is, <laughs> is it really, does it really come down to just do it? Like, because like, so right now there's a whole lot of people out there that are hearing stuff like this. They've mm -hmm. got these visions and it's like, well, how come we didn't create Camp Canada? How come we're not having sit downs with our, um, premieres or whatever it may be like because we even we we were just watching um what were we watching inventing anna have you ever seen the the, the tv show or the, the anna An Delby inventing story. anna on netflix basically it was it oh, was it's based on a true story if you don't know who anna delvey is you should yeah check you should look inventing it up anna it's a nine but uh, it's episode a, it's a story of somebody who found out very quickly that if you um you can sell an idea to a bunch of people and everybody is going, well, who else do you have? And nobody wanted to be the first one in, but once, once, so she ended up lying, but once you kind of, all of a sudden people are like, Oh, there's other people involved. Now I want to be in. So mm -hmm. how do you go about doing that? You got this idea of camp Canna. How do you, you know, go to a, somebody in power um, and go, we got this thing and have him go, I mean, maybe he didn't, I mean, or, or maybe she didn't. And it'd be like, well, you know, is anybody else involved in this? Like, do you have anything else set up? Like, I feel like how did you get that first piece? The first year they had to be like, I feel this like is what I we can do. a lot of that weight on Alexis. Alexis has done sales mm -hmm. and finance for many years. So she's good at calling people and talking to them and she can take a note and continue on mm -hmm. and make a hundred more phone calls that day and not be disturbed. Mm -hmm. Me, I will be crippled at that first no and I will cry. So it's all about that yin and yang and pulling from our strengths because it was hard in the beginning to find people. And this year we do have people who've seen it. So it's easier for them to buy in. But I think at the end of the day, if you haven't seen um, Wanda James speak, like phenomenal, but it's her, like just those motivational speeches, you know, she was just doing her thing. And she was also tired of waiting. So she got on the mm. phone and she made things happen. And you know what? I'm here. I'm not doing anything wrong. So let's talk about it. Let's get some growth on mm. the go. Yeah. I feel like um, in my brain, I've made a mountain out of a molehill. They told me I couldn't do it. They told me I couldn't mm. bring up in a conversation. They told me there is no special events license for cannabis. Nobody's talking about it. We're not going to get there. And I just like 
didn't believe them. I'm like, this is literally 2023. We have a clinic in Calgary that serves psilocybin <laughs> therapy. Like, why can't I smoke a joint at a public place? Like, this is silly. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm seeing, like, there's so many great movements that are going on. Um, but I want my voice to be heard. I want, I want our opinion because we're mothers. Like the stigma is going to end when the mothers raise <laughs> the children with the right view and the fathers raise the children, like not showing as the war on drugs. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, nothing that we're doing is wrong. We're completely positive with this. And so I take that confidence when I'm like talking to people, just like come and see for yourself. Like our MLA, please come to Camp Canna. Please check. Please explain. But we also have to like have, I feel like I'm skilled in selling the vision because I believe mm. in the vision so care like so much. And so when I say I made a mole, uh, mountain out of a molehill for dignified consumption, like I'm prepared to die on this hill. Like I'm prepared to die up here on this mountain because my daughter is going to turn 18 years old and the only public event for her to go to is surrounded around alcohol and there's no mm. other option for her right now and i'm not okay with that my daughter's going to be 18 12 years down the road like we're, we got to do something about it now before it's too late and i think that you know maybe if 18 year olds had a secondary option there wouldn't be as much you know Statistics, statistics prove alcohol is just not as safe. You know what I mean? Let's mm. have an alternative. Um, and so I think that's just something that if if we don't, who will? Because well, I've sat here and wait, like waited. <laughs> mm, yep. you know? well, I don't, I know we're talking different provinces because we're in Ontario and you guys mm. are in Alberta. Um, yeah. But here in Ontario, like we go to a place like Canada's Wonderland. Mm -hmm. And as a cannabis consumer, in order to even be allowed to carry my cannabis into the park, I have to have my medical documentation on me. And mm -hmm. as Timmy can attest to, it creates a problem at the gate and mm -hmm. you have to be very polite and firm in yeah. that you are allowed to carry it and that it is a medical thing that they're mm -hmm. because they don't know this guy mm -hmm. doesn't know from that guy you got to call the head guy and then like mm -hmm. it was like five ten minutes and then they're sorry ma'am no problem just make sure you have that license I said yep i don't travel without it it's fine mm -hmm. i got it but while we're inside if i want to go and have a joint i then i still have to leave the park to go and consume it mm -hmm. but this is the part that bothers me while I'm standing in line for the 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, I'm getting bumped by the person behind me because they're not paying attention and they've got their beer in their hand and they're bumping into me. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to allowed? bump into her. I was trying to keep my distance, but it just... Well, in all fairness, I shouldn't have made you carry all my beer. <laughs> That's true, too. Well, no, but it's ridiculous. Like, we in our morning show, we covered news stories about, you know, Ontario... Um, talking about Ottawa actually saying that they want to put more graphic warning labels on cannabis. Now my daughter sees these cannabis containers in my home. She knows that this is medicine. She knows that this is a tool. She mm -hmm. also sees cigarettes in my home because I smoke cigarettes. There's graphic warnings on cigarettes, rightfully so. They should be there. Yeah. But I'm I judging can... now, just so you know. There's judging. no lock on your cigarette pack, though. Pardon? There's no lock on your cigarette pack. No, there isn't. But however, I can take my daughter. I have to leave her in the car to go into the cannabis store. Yeah. But I can take her into the liquor store where the bottles are all on the shelves that she can reach. Not a mm -hmm. single warning at all on an alcohol yeah. bottle. Policing, when we were on the tourism panel at Grow Up, we spoke with City Councilor Michael Jans. And he said that when it comes to... Um, councils like city councils the largest cost for any municipality is policing and when they think about mm -hmm. since cannabis became legalized there's basically zero incident when it comes to policing cannabis so right. at this point what's the harm i don't understand we have data we have reasons and we just don't have enough voices so i will stand up and be that voice if we need to <laughs> Um, so what what is um, there's, there's and there's so many hurdles. I, I mean, we we have the conversation here all the time of people saying, "Well, it's it's legal now, and mm -hmm. the fight is over." The fight the fight is is not as a non consumer. 
I'm looking around going <laughs> like, like, wait, this is legal. Like, like you, you would be hard. It almost feels like there's more restrictions and more rules in place than I never, I ever would have thought. So mm -hmm. out of all the stuff that still needs to get done in terms of what you guys, what your vision is, what is, what's, what's the primary hurdle? What is the one that, that like is, what are some of the biggest, the, like, the one that you're facing right now going, man, this is a tough one. Man, where I do we start? I think <laughs> I thought you said man. I'm like, yep. I, I got mean, that. we're we're at a point where we feel like we need to go right back to that foundation because when you look at the medicinal cannabis, how it's been rolled out, and indigenous brands, excise tax, like we could go on and on. The little guys don't have a leg to stand on out there. I mean, it's it's sad for the industry, but the government, they're raking it in out there. $1.55 billion in a fiscal year last year, to be exact. But um, yeah, yeah like, like the government's laughing. Um, I think tourism. Yeah. People want to come and tour. Like mm -hmm. Alexis was out for dinner while we were at Grow Up. Oh, yes. And, and there was the family from the UK that came because they wanted to experience <laughs> the cannabis culture, but they couldn't they even couldn't find, find a joint. They yeah. didn't know where to look. I gave them one. Uh, don't you agree? <laughs> but <laughs> there's just so yeah. many areas. And that's so a, that's a like cannabis this. event. Yeah, this that's, review, that's the I sad think. thing. That's a cannabis event, and people go there looking for sometimes more than just information, mm -hmm. but like experiential information. They, as well. they were yeah. at the event. They no, were just in. I was town. just out for dinner in Edmonton, but um, oh, okay. yeah, no. But that that's that's a huge thing, though. Like we're not allowed to actually have any. The big thing for me is promotion. This industry is going to fail if we do not change our promotion guidelines. If I cannot mm. advertise my new products, if I cannot explain the benefits to my products, if I cannot try to bring in new customers or new consumers or, you know what I mean? There's a million products out there. Some people mm -hmm. have no idea where to even start, but mm -hmm. I can't also advertise to you even about Camp Canna. Like we got reached out to from Health Canada just recently. Um <clears throat> They were concerned about how we were like they just cited the promotion laws to us um, as like a hey could you tell me more about your event but keep in mind all of these things are illegal like um, making mm -hmm. it look glamorous or fun or portraying a certain lifestyle associated to cannabis or mm -hmm. anything like that so the culture of cannabis. Mm -hmm. portraying the culture of cannabis could be technically depending it could technically be against the legislation right so um that to me is mind boggling like the the alcohol promotion guidelines like you can promote anything you know what i mean literally anything and mm -hmm. you can have it on radio stations on tvs you can put it anywhere but we've reached the peak of cannabis consumers. That's what the finance critics said last year, that we've reached the peak now. And ev almost every, really? like I would say four out of five cannabis companies I talk to are struggling. And if they could just promote why they even do what they do mm -hmm. to help get some consumers, like some brand loyalty, perhaps they'd survive. But unfortunately, everybody's kind of stuck, hands, hands tied. tied. You can't share yeah. what you do. So, so you're 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 clearly on the radar then if people are coming to you saying uh you know yeah. you can't do this and that which is good you want to be on the radar well i mean it's not that they said that we can't do it it's that no, they're they like say. hey can you explain yourself yeah and they're like yeah Here's and be the careful answer. how you promote it too because yeah. like i don't i don't know if you're aware of this but like if i were to call a local cannabis store and say hey do you have sun farms pink kush uh, they could tell me yes or no, but they could not tell me if I asked, well, how much is it? They can't tell me the price mm -hmm. They can, they, because they don't know if I'm an adult. There's no way to verify if I'm of age. So they mm -hmm. need to make sure that I go into the store. Mm -hmm. So like, this is why like, and I've mm -hmm. seen people break it. There's a store here in town that they've got signs posted on like light posts and they're just zip tied on there. And they say like cannabis starting at $5 a gram. Mm -hmm. And these are legal dispensaries. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like, but it's this like, is like you got to push the limit. 
Yeah, people, I think, are also acting from a point of desperation right now. Like, there's so many people that are just on the brink, like, a month or two months away from yeah. losing it. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, like, that's what else are you going to do? Um, we had, um, for, uh, for us, like, Health Canada didn't tell us not that we were doing anything wrong. They simply, okay. it was brought to their attention. They have to follow up. They sent us a thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, there is no special events license for cannabis. So, unfortunately... You have no governing authority over me whatsoever. Yeah. Until well, I mean, one, please create one. If you need help with that, I'll help you. But <laughs> unfortunately, that's the that's the state we're in right now. <laughs> like I'm curious. Like in order to okay, so like if I were to have an event and mm -hmm. I wanted to have alcohol at that event, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to sell alcohol at that event, I would need a special permit and a license. But if I were to just have a camping party with a bunch of my friends and they all brought their own alcohol and everybody was of age, then mm -hmm. do I need a special permit? And if I don't need a special permit for that, then why would I need it if all my friends brought their own cannabis mm -hmm. and all but I'm doing is advertising mm -hmm. the camp? Yeah. Like, Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing because we're hosting a camping yeah. event. The things there are like um factors of Camp Canada that we have to ensure are compliant with municipal, mm -hmm. provincial, and federal. And that's like having cannabis delivery on site. We have to make sure that that is within AGLC's guidelines. Like they're yeah. set up for delivery with AGLC, they're age gating, they're using the right platforms. Um, we have legal brands present. Licensed people take part in Camp Canada. So that means we have to make sure that we are providing a safe space for them. So um, no outward facing marketing, illegal brands, making sure that it's not visible from the road, um, like mm -hmm. things like that. You know what I mean? Just little tiny little hoops, um, but they're hoops nonetheless. And and by the end of it, we're, we have a nice wicked event. It's super fun, but um, it takes a lot of planning and a lot of time goes into it and a lot of reading jo so on Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Jolene does the research, and then you go out and I do the deal talk. With the research. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. She like preps me, sends me out like a little bulldog. It's yeah. fine. This is what and you I, need to know. Does, does, she like hand, does she hand you like the binder at the beginning of the day and say, "Here's your notes for today"? No, go I just stand work. behind her and I'm like whispering into my. <laughs> We need to get an earpiece. Like, and if that we'll doesn't get speak on her growth, uh -huh. I'm telling the story of Camp Canada last year. Camp Canada last year was the first time Jolene had ever run into the situation where she had to go up on stage and talk into a microphone. And so really? she... Yeah, and we didn't think ever? about it because we were so busy. We were planning, doing the things. We just forgot all about the part that we probably have to go on stage and say something. So we like... <laughs> went up there and we had it all planned out i, had I was it gonna wrote say out. this I had lots of she stuff. was gonna say that i say my piece i give her the mic she says the words but like no noise is coming out like whatsoever <laughs> like nobody can hear you you're not talking you're not even making a single noise <laughs> and the rest of it she just froze and she had to like whisper <laughs> to me what she was gonna say and then i would just like say it for her through the microphone to like being on stage now nailed it i'm just telling you insane yeah so good i didn't go on stage at, uh, weekend i was at, like no, here's what you need to at, say go get them tied at can at, at, at can expo mm -hmm. um you guys had invited me up on stage yeah and um i went the route of uh completely awkward um and and decided I was just going to wing this completely awkward thing. I think you started off with what's your name? And I just said, Tim, I don't even think I said, Timmy, I said, Tim, <laughs> and then left and then left it there. Um, and Tim so, <laughs> Jolene, so Jolene at that point, I mean, what are you doing with stuff? I, I, I didn't realize that you were so brand new on the stage. I probably shouldn't have, uh, played it off so okay, awkward because we're awkward together i think that's why we're best friends <laughs> we have awkward comedy that's clean but is it <laughs> and clean, um but is, okay you know you know right. so i yeah. think it, it worked out good it worked out in my favor having a little I, face like now i've learned that um you know, sometimes it's easy because you're sitting over there and I could look at you in the crowd and I could talk to you and it looks like I'm talking to the crowd. So 
you know, mm -hmm. now I've gone to the point because it's still, it makes me feel so nervous. But when we had that interview with Chef Jordan Wegman, mm -hmm. because I wasn't consuming right. before I was talking because I was so nervous, it was heightening my nerves instead of relaxing them because sometimes mm -hmm. that can happen even as an everyday consumer. And I took an edible and I got up there and the whole crowd just went away and I had the best interview. So then from that moment on, I've just been like, you know, letting the crowd fade away and picking my couple people. So I'm still looking at everyone and associating with them. But really, you guys, I'm just scared. And there's three of you. That are my if, best I, if I went if I went on stage and the whole crowd just disappeared, that's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think like like figuratively disappeared or literally yeah yeah you know like okay. i, for, yeah, I forgot literally, that's we're not having good, such really. a good conversation me and him that i forgot that the crowd was there and at some points that's i felt it. bad and like looked at alexis man and, like, i was so stoned for I'm, that I keep, interview i, keep I should not to have even been on stage and not letting you talk I ate an edible. It had 200 milligrams in it. I don't do edibles. I have a zero edible tolerance. And I ate it specifically 45 minutes before I went on stage. Shout out to uh, Jesse Paul for that situation. But um, yeah, that's, uh, but yeah, it was good. We made it through. Yeah, <laughs> Jolene did so great. It's my favorite interview of her because she's just like a hype girl. I made myself a little reel of it after just for yeah. my own entertainment mm -hmm. of all her right awkwardness this is great i'm loving this <laughs> so so in that growth then jolene is is it easier for you now to stand on stage and talk to a crowd of people that slowly disappear or having those one-on-one -on -one conversations that alexis tends to have when she's sitting down talking to these people in power and authority can you have those conversations or are you are you now kind of just i'm okay with talking to the crowd but i don't really have that one-on-one -on -one. Um, like I'm shy, but if you come and talk to me, I'll talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. I'm just a little bit shy and awkward. That's all. Once you get past that, it's a good time. I swear. Jolene's like internal <laughs> programming is statistics. Like she's very critically mi critical minded. So I really enjoy when we're talking to people of authority or people in power when I'm talking to Jolene because where I can sell the big picture Jolene can really hone in on the little details and the very important details that like, you know, are going to sway a decision that I would not have that swaying ability. Um, so I do think that, you know, that's very powerful in that, in those situations, even if she is a little nervous and shy. And I, I, <laughs> I love it. Well, um, when actually my stage fright is what drove me to the day that I met Timmy, uh, conquering my stage fright. So um, I totally understand, Jolene, where you're coming from when you say, like, it It kind of, like, it's hard to focus. I'm, I'm glad you've been able to find, like, that thing that works for you, like, focus on this person, this person, and obviously the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say that now, like, I, I host trivia, and... Um, there's nothing that I love more than that microphone in my hand. <laughs> I just, yeah, it's like, I even be dazzled it because I just love it so much. So yeah. I'm hoping one day you'll get there too. You'll get to that point where you're like, uh, I got this, Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, she's that way with the megaphone now for Camp Canada. So I I'm do excited. like a good megaphone. She loves the megaphone. Nice. <laughs> we'll have a yeah. megaphone all weekend long <laughs> so everyone That's can awesome. hear me. Because I'm kind of quiet so too. Yeah. With uh, so with Camp Canna, which I I do want to talk specifically about that, but um, the plan the plan it is seems to be you want to take it outside of Alberta eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you seem to have a, a wider vision for everything going on. What what have you discovered about the state of Canada versus Alberta alone? Like, if when you start looking at about how we go across here as one nation that mm -hmm. has legalized mm -hmm. it, how different? are all of the provinces currently they're all so different. they're all so different so yeah different. manitoba's still fighting like you could for growing your four plants not only could you go to jail and get criminal fines but you could get like a thousands of dollar fine a hundred thousand a hundred thousand dollars quebec wow. you're not allowed to grow your four plants you know mm -hmm. what i mean and they fought and it went all the way to the supreme court and unfortunately they decided that you know what the province has this one mm -hmm. 
and i can't mean, even consume it's, it's outside it's in Quebec. everywhere like mm -hmm. um some places have regulators like out east it was the government running it and there mm -hmm. was small businesses but now we're seeing these cute little farm gates be able to pop up where they actually have like a little farm you know fresh stand table situation going on and that's mm. that's needed that's mm. necessary mm. so we can have these conversations and i feel like you know maybe you wanted to get a little education and step into an indigenous brand store in ontario you would have a lot easier of a time than alberta mm -hmm. yeah. alberta is the most taxed out of all provinces and territories if you're a licensed producer and that's really hard for those little guys so everything is so different everywhere so mm -hmm. that's why it's so important that you're hitting all three levels when it comes to federal regulation and the acts provincial mm -hmm. or territorial depending where you are and then your municipality where you sit too because that can even change it mm -hmm. and uh you know that rolls downhill fast guys that's all i'm saying was out was Alberta, um, in terms of, like, was that a good place to start Camp Canada? What did was, were you able to learn a lot that would make it easier in other provinces? Would there have been an easier province to start in? How would that have looked? I think that for they all have their hurdles. They all have their hurdles. I think Alberta was the best to start it in, honestly, because we live here, number one. Generations. Um, yeah, for generations in this area. Also, I'm when we started, we were like, eek, the stigma is real in our community. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, you know. That's why you got your curtains closed. 30 yeah. years in the past. And so um, we just, I don't know. I just embodied it. I'm cool with it. I'm. It is what it is. She's At the end so of the day, open. I'm not changing it. She shared it. I in the consumer. parent chat about Camp about Canada. Camp Canada. Hey, and guys. I was like. I had a I had a heart attack that night and I, I had to review who no. was in her daughter's class because there's only fucking 18 of yeah, them I part of my language. Care. I don't care. <laughs> if you would like to participate in something that my business does, I'm going to share that with you because you would share it with me if you were a dentist, a doctor, or whatever your business does. If you were a plumber, you would tell me and I would call you if I needed it. Maybe you need a weekend away from your kids, y'all. I get it, dude. Like, come to this. You don't have to consume, but come. It'll be fun. And maybe that will break the stigma when we just don't care anymore and we just start mm -hmm. inviting people. And it is what it is. Come and join it. Once you get there, what are you going to say? Oh, they were smoking weed. Meanwhile, at they baseball were happy. practice, I'm like, <laughs> why are they all staring at us like that? What's going on? And clearly, they're talking about the parent chat, guys. Yeah. So some of us, some of us embody the, the non-care <laughs> a little more than the other. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I gave up caring. Um, yeah. Once I came out to my kids. Once my kids <laughs> knew what cannabis mm -hmm. was and why mm -hmm. I used it, I was mm -hmm. like, you know what? Yeah, and especially I got my medical license. I was like, I, I wear weed pants. I go out. I literally I like. Mm -hmm. we, it, both, it, we both do. Yeah, they know that you're friggin' into the yeah, cannabis anyway. My, so. I, I'm to my kids' teacher. My this year. thing is, it's not about like being out. Like everyone definitely knows it's a small town. They yeah. talk. It's for me. It's one thing knowing. It's another thing like seeing. And I, the, I feel like sometimes the kids get a little bit of stigma shade because of it. You know, like mm. I think, yeah, maybe. But your kids never, are always fed no. and dressed and mm -hmm. on time. And well, happy we don't know that. And clean. We actually I don't do. know. That. I follow them yeah. yeah. on Snap. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I homeschooled yeah. my kids so I didn't have to feed them and clothe them and yeah. get them off. And nobody knew. Leave them yeah. dirty <laughs> where they belong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just keep the door closed and the curtains well, shut. And nobody didn't you knows. teach your daughter Spanish by uh, using the, the Spanish version of Shrek? Yeah, yeah. She just watched she watched Shrek, Shrek four times a day in the Spanish version and learned Spanish. So nice. you don't even homeschooling is so easy. You don't even have to like oh, yeah. pay attention to your kid. Just mm -hmm. it's it's pretty cool stuff. We um, have like that's what people think. The, it's something that I will say about our community is where it is 40 years in the past is that the stigma is very much lifted here now. Um, because we had a, a Mother's Day tea here, mm -hmm. and when we got the keys from the venue, and like we had CBD tea, uh, 
partnered with a, an mm -hmm. indigenous brand um, to provide that. And we had it like very Bridgerton vibes, like, you know, like really nice on like a lake um, top, like rooftop place that had like this patio so you just want to step outside the door and consume your cannabis like for sure we're consuming inside and when we got the keys from the venue they were like they so were what are you doing again like they were a little worried like you can tell they're like yeah i don't know about this and they were a bar so i told them sorry we're not serving alcohol during this event and and to them they felt like that was so weird why would you gather right. this adults and not serve alcohol but anyways it was interesting to see them as each guest came in their opinion mm -hmm. of stoners change when they saw mm -hmm. these like industry leaders well put together like you know like these the ladies they I the ladies. Ladies. Yeah. Like, there it was, was so, so many fun. beautiful women there and then at the end just, like honed into it at the end, they're like, do you girls put on any other events? Like, can we can we maybe put up a poster next time you have one mm -hmm. so we can tell people about it? Like those kind, it's just takes somebody doing it for people to experience it. And then it's just easier from there. So I think that that's yeah. really. The, the has that has that like started to snowball? Because I know, I mean, we talked about when we first on the first interview, we talked about that stigma of being the mom, you know, you're waiting outside for your kids. Mm -hmm. um, has this small community? Is this is this something that is kind of exponentially stigma is falling down? Or like, mm -hmm. like, how is that unfolding? I see it falling down all of the time. Like I don't see it anymore at all because I just refuse okay. to believe that there is one. And I'm just, I'm, I am who I am. You are who you are. I think I see it too falling down. And sometimes I believe that it went away so passionately that when it does come back around, I'm so shocked and appalled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like how dare you have your negativity <laughs> over here? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah, oh, man, that literally that flashed me back to Christmas. Do you remember when I went to grab dinner on Christmas? There's one man. I I always when I see families or children, I always make sure I like move away from them. Like mm -hmm. I'll cross the road I, as, when I'm smoking. I don't want even when I was a cigarette smoker, I still would cross the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember I didn't even realize that there was a family behind me when I crossed the road. So I like tucked over to the thing and I was like, oh, sorry. And I, I moved over to the side. And then when the light went green the other way, I let him go first. And he made a comment about how I was going. Or he said to the kids, he said, just, or he said, remember, just because something is legal does mm -hmm. not mean it will not send you to hell. And I was so taken back. Like you said, I, I thought this, this was gone. What, like, what, what are you talking about? But I'm over here with your shade. I'm like, I looked at the gentleman. He had three children tagging along behind him. I could tell just by looking at him that his religion made him believe that cannabis was such a bad thing. Like I could tell that he was a religious person and that that was not in line with his values. Mm -hmm. So I understood where he was coming from, but it didn't make it hurt any less. Mm -hmm. And the part that hurt was the fact that I'm like, now there are three little children that are hearing that. And I'm that's not necessarily that. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it also doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. No, it doesn't. No, and I'm like, and that's where I'm like, yes, this is why I believe when I went back and I told them, I was like, we need to keep fighting this. We need mm -hmm. to keep fighting this stigma because there are still people out there that believe that we're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. Or well, I am, you're not. No, I'm going to hell. Well, I guess technically, because you date, you're dating. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, no. There's a lot of reasons why I'm going to hell now. Yeah, I never, I never used to be, but I've checked off a lot of the hell boxes now. Apparently, oopsie. I'm Those are also in line with the fun boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the that's like That's like food. All the all the flavor is hidden in the gluten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's I'm true. Convinced. True that. It could be. I'm a firm believer that this next generation is going to be out there and crush generational trauma. They're growing up in a completely different society where cannabis is being used by quite a bit of the population, whether it is 
just recreationally or for medicinal purpose. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see what this next generation does because I really believe that they're going to be the ones that heal it and just bring it that final phase. Well, and when when more people can provide dignified res like um, consumption responsible, in spaces, dignified yes. fun. Yes, in in consumption spaces. That's what we're gonna call all... this. We're gonna call this episode okay. uh, responsible, all... <laughs> dignified fun. When they can see these things all over, where mm -hmm. we're not stigmatized, like whether you want to go bowling and go for a break or whatever the activity or it is, um, it's gonna create a space for these children to grow up and and see that it's okay. It, yeah. it's, it, I want it to be more normal to smoke a joint than mm -hmm. to go and get hammered. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But also like in a responsible manner in the sense that like cannabis affects everybody differently. And if you mm -hmm. have a bad experience with cannabis, like we've lost you forever. So when we say responsible, mm -hmm. that's just in a matter of do what's best for you. Like low and slow rhetoric. Like maybe you don't carry your bong in your purse everywhere you go. Like I do, but like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like whatever works for you. Like, and, and well, just even of, that's fine too. So like if I'm smoking a joint with Jolene and she doesn't want to finish it, that would never happen, but maybe she didn't want to finish <laughs> it. I would just be okay with that. And that's responsible, dignified consumption. Um, instead of being like, oh, come on, man, finish it, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah but it would be nice to have places. Like I know when I was younger, yeah. um, I went to the bar to learn my tolerance. One night I would have one drink. The next night I went out, I'd have two drinks. The next night I'd have three. And then I realized that where my level was, but we don't even have that for cannabis. Like mm -hmm. how nice would it be? Like you're saying to have a little coffee shop where mm -hmm. you could order whatever, uh, with mochaccino, whether you want a coffee, iced coffee, whatever the hell I don't drink coffee. So I don't know, but, mm -hmm. and then you could infuse it with whether you want a sativa oil or um, a hybrid oil or CBD. And how much do you want? Do you want five milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams? What's your dose? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, we don't, we don't have those places. For the new consumer market yeah, being education. seniors, like when seniors overconsume their fall risks, why are we not chaperoning them? You know what I mean? Yeah, like why education? Yeah. Or just teach them how to even administer it. My grandfather got his medical license before it was legalized and he got it because my mom pushed him to get it um, because he had back problems and she thought it would help him with his pain or whatever. But he didn't, when he got it, it was in bud form. Yeah. He had no idea how to roll a joint, what to do with it, what part of it to even yeah. smoke. Like you can't, set people up for failure and expect the industry yeah. to survive. So well, that's and that, why... was, that was before people even were allowed. Like there was a time when you weren't even allowed to make edibles and we had to fight for the right to, and mm -hmm. like, it was, it was so stupid. They, the doctors expected children, even children that were on medical cannabis to use a vaporizer and put the vaporizer over the kid's face. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we had to fight for the right to just be able to put it into butter and oils and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. well, I yeah. have to I have to be careful on 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 the journey that I'm on of thinking that cannabis will play some role. I'm not sure what, but I have to be very careful because I just turned fifty and I'm a fall risk now as well. <laughs> I just don't want to. Uh, I got to be very very to keep that dose small. Well, that's <laughs> why we go to the legal stores because yeah. You the packages are 10 milligrams and mm -hmm. some of them, they do five pieces. That's mm -hmm. only two milligrams each, each one. Yeah. And if you need it even smaller, get an oil, you can get the dropper and you can literally yeah. go down to a point. Can one. I, can I consume it though while I'm riding my scooter? Around Technically town? It, you're not allowed to be intoxicated and uh, drive any okay. vehicle, motor whether vehicle. it's a bicycle, mm -hmm. motor vehicle, mm -hmm. But I feel like the key word is intoxicated mm -hmm. because, because it affects like, everyone differently for a different length of mm -hmm. time and even still different consumption methods can affect yeah. different people differently. Well, the whole the whole concept of affecting people differently, I think, is, is a is a great conversation piece. And I want to talk specifically about Camp, um, Camp Canna right now because because we are um, getting close to our uh, our bedtime. Um, but. Um, you had mentioned right at the beginning and even what you're saying there about uh, it affects everybody differently and people got to have different doses, different things. But you even said that 10%, I believe, was the number of people who non-consumers 
were mm -hmm. enjoying Camp Canna. Mm -hmm. And to me, I, I think one of the steps that um, people often talk about the stigma from the other side. So, you know, people not in the cannabis space have this stigma about those in, but there's also this, this thing that people in the space with this assumption that you all must smoke cannabis. You, you have to smoke cannabis. It's, it's, and it's like, wait, hold on. We need to get to a place where we need to have events like Camp Canna mm -hmm. where, listen, um, just like when people used to say when, um, when I was in the church and before I like when I was going to heaven, not hell. Um, <laughs> and I would be a comedian and people would want to live and sit there and say, Oh, you're a Christian comic. And it's like, no, no, I just happened to be a comic who at the time was Christian. Mm -hmm. And we need to start, stop having these things of going, you know, you're a cannabis chef. We just talked to Jordan Wagman on a mm -hmm. podcast episode. We Love just that. did. Yeah. And it's like, he doesn't want to be a cannabis chef. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be a non-cannabis comedian. Mm -hmm. um, your event shouldn't even be a cannabis event. It's an event, a great event that yeah. happens to allow. to allow cannabis consumption. Yeah. I'm a comedian who happens to maybe talk about cannabis, maybe not. Jordan Wagman is a chef who happens to use cannabis. Or maybe you are not. moms. You're not cannabis moms. You are mm -hmm. moms who happen to consume cannabis. Mm -hmm. And so when you were saying that about Camp Canna, that to me is, is is great because what you want is to create more of those spaces where it doesn't matter if you consume. Mm -hmm. Come out, have a great time. Some other people here might, yeah. but mm -hmm. let's just have a good time and allow it so that everybody can come to have a good time. Can, Canna yeah. camp. And it's and your it's choice, you know, at the end of the day, you got to follow your heart, whether it's that extra piece of chocolate or maybe an extra doobie, depends who you are. Right. Or mm. not, because I tell you, or I've not. been to events too, where if you go a little too hard, too early in the day, it's smart to lay off a little bit because you don't want to crash too hard in the middle of the day. You still have a full rest of it, of mm. activities. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's about about learning your balance and i guess my question would be what because i know you guys are about responsible what do you and what, dignified yes and, and dignified fun. what checks do you guys have in place for if somebody feels a little overwhelmed mm. per se what at camp canna i can't so they have yeah. a team of vibe enhancers all throughout the, the camp and yep. and their job is to just enhance the vibe like make if the sure vibe's going good. south like let's make sure everybody's doing good our bud patrol units um go throughout the camp check on everybody do you need any water you do guys doing okay great awesome like we're constantly yeah. just checking on people like we're moms let's check on them how are but, they doing right. we also have hired security and first day first responder but not um, only that it, you have to remember it's not like an event where there's alcohol like people yeah. don't go hog wild you know they yeah. They, if they are going to consume all day, they are being mindful of how they're layering it and what effects they're getting. So by the end of the day, they're feeling euphoric instead of in their tent snoring, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because what's the alternative if they overdo it? They go sleep. <laughs> they're still not running naked in the in the bush. <laughs> Wait, is it, is it clothing optional or what's the deal? You do you. We do um, have boudoir photos this year. Yeah, we do, so. which is exciting. Okay, all right. Um, but the thing is, I'm not even wearing pants now, so that's why the day has like we worked really hard to put a nice flow to the schedule. So, like, you start your morning with some yoga, then you go into a guided meditation nice. and sound bath. If you have consumed at those points in your day, like your vibe is just like on the right level for the day. But that's your choice. We it's do games in the afternoon. Maybe that's not your vibe. Maybe you want to go have a nap in the afternoon. Maybe you want to play mm -hmm. sports in the afternoon. There's music at night. There's also a movie at night. So like, depending on what you want to do, like, there's two mm -hmm. kilometers of nature trails mm -hmm. though. So if you just need to get away and have that moment, mm -hmm. they can get away and have that moment at night. We light it up. Mm -hmm. So it's really beautiful. Like yeah. consuming and doing yoga is not for everyone. I was super stoked last year and I learned that it is actually really hard to consume and do yoga on point. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever gone to goat yoga where they're doing yoga and there's like goats literally licking you? Ew, that's no. a true oh thing. God. That's a so very that's a true thing. Wait, have you done that? I haven't done it. No, oh, okay. but it's a true thing. It's, they, people I find goats. Peaceful. So I'd be worried about the goats. 
Yeah, I would be too. Um, but I'm I'm on the yoga train. I'd like yoga changed my life. I'm on, mm -hmm. I'm on that train as well. Yeah. Um, so what's the purpose of Camp Canna? Let let's kind of close this thing off here. Um, really give Camp Canna that that good sell. What's the purpose? Shush, shush. What's happening? The purpose of Camp Canna was to have fun, to get together, have some like fun. Find community members. Mm -hmm. Celebrate being a consumer in yeah. a cannabis event where legal brands can be present so you can get to know the why behind the products that you're consuming. Because there are some mm -hmm. amazing events that happen, but you have to have like your registration hey, from QCW, your government. Mm -hmm. It's different in Ontario than here, but you have to be a bud tender or in the industry some way to attend these amazing events. And we wanted oh. the two worlds to be able to come together. And mm -hmm. yeah, because one day, one and day, celebrate we're have the that culture. The culture was lost in translation through legalization. So we're just trying to bring the culture back to the legal market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it a hybrid? Because what what I've been noticing here, we MJ and I have talked a lot about it personally and publicly about the the uncomfortable divide that has happened in the legacy market and the legal market and mm -hmm. a community that used to seem to be on the same page mm -hmm. um, as now has now been split with with people on the one side looking down on the legacy people and the legacy people looking going, Oh, you guys have sold, ones. you guys have sold out. It's like, wait, hold on. This is what you, we all wanted this and like, what's, what's happening. And so camp Canada is, is you're saying it's kind of trying to well, it's great. bridge it's that gap. Legacy with legal. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's what's needed. It's not a, I don't imagine it's um like, like we don't have any legacy brands at Camp Canna, but we do well, like legacy people. I mean. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Like we respect the foundation, but also legal people. It's legal to consume in Canada. Like, right. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like yeah. we are at the end of the day, like the legacy market culture is the right word. They created the foundation for the legal market. They have, mm -hmm. you know, the genetics. They had all the things that we needed. And now that A we have people it, came from there. We see an industry mm -hmm. that's just lacking the foundation because the foundation wasn't poured properly. Um, so now we need to go back and fix that. And I think that fixing that really just needs to be to remember the culture that made it so special to begin with before we worried about legislation and things like that. Like mm. the culture was you got a good doobie, you called up your friends, you all went down to the park and you shared the doobie and you had fun mm. and you did whatever you mm. wanted because you were just having fun and dignified with your friends. So let's just mm. bring that back to it instead of let's see your QCW number. You can have a pre-roll. I guess we'll let you in. Yeah. I got you your bag yeah. to make sure you're not over your limit. You know what I mean? Just some bring mm. some culture back to it. Mm. Mm. Nice. Sounds, oh. It sounds like the cannabis industry built a mansion but mm -hmm. forgot to do all of the landscaping. Yeah. So that's what the cannabis the industry drive, like. Right? This, is, this yeah. is what the culture, we need to go in and we need to plant the flowers and the bushes and the gardens and the paths. and the... That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Thanks uh, for building the mansion. So tell people right now, uh, because obviously uh, I think by the time this goes to air, we're only a couple of weeks away. Um, Yes. Uh, when, when is Camp Canna? How do people find out about it? How do they sign up? How do they go? All of that information. You can get a pass if there's still any available by the time this airs at oh, Camp Canna. Almost sold out. Yeah. You can find the nice. link on our Instagram and our Facebook. We're also on TikTok. We like to get up to shenanigans everywhere. Mm hmm. And yeah. that's all blunt. It's, it's is it blunts and beans or Camp Canna has its own? Is it all yeah. at, at Camp Canna? For Camp Canna, it's campcanna.ca. You can go on there, hit RSVP. That'll bring you to the past website. Um, or you can go on Instagram at blunts and beans or at camp underscore Canna. Um, and just click, click yeah, we're all link. linked up. Just uh, clickety boo yeah. and you're good to go. <laughs> you know? Love it. Don't like to do work. Just click. Yeah. Clickety boo. Like us, us women we like our clickety -click. yeah, like the clickety boo um well liz I, I one day whether or not we show up in a couple of weeks or whether we show up next year or whether we're just drop into the one that eventually comes to ontario however that plays out we are we want to be a part of it mm -hmm. um always huge supporters 
yeah, we we believe in you guys. We're we're excited about where you guys have come from, mm -hmm. uh, where you're going, and uh, yeah, we couldn't be more excited for for what Camp Canada is and where what it can become too. So, although I do want to say, I think you need to stop calling it Camp Canada. You need to call it the annual, the Camp annual Canada. Camp Canada, because like it's mm -hmm. every year. You want them to know, like it's every year. It'll be back next year. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. yeah, it will be. I like that. <laughs> Do you have any any final Sorry. words? Final words. Are we getting Man. executed? What's that? Are we getting executed? I'm excited. I'm he excited. does that to me all the time. Final I'm like, final. Thank you for having us on oh, your show for a second you time. You guys have always spoke to the winners and us like long before we started winning. And I definitely appreciate that of both of you, even you, Timmy. You know, oh. <laughs> but uh, oh, definitely you. appreciate you guys for that. I love you. <laughs> thank you. Well, yeah. it's it's easy. Winners see winners, and <laughs> as soon as we met you guys, I was like, <laughs> "What? Oh, you're reaching, reaching out, out for Jolene. Reaching for Jolene. Okay. Oh, 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 I'm not uh, even in here. <laughs> I thought we were doing a group hug or something. <laughs> It's, no, it's, no, no. I'm just like super excited because my love and my heart is in the advocacy mm -hmm. side of things. So it's nice to meet, like, we'll just say like celebrities and influencers oh. that you guys like, are. Yeah, I know you still look yeah. at your faces. You're like, Meh. okay, just like we're like celebrities like too, okay? But, mm. but it's the fact that you're working hard to make change as well. Like, you're not just like, hey, you know, this is great and fun. It's like, how do we make this more accessible for not just us, but for other people too? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love the movers and the shakers. You're shaking the ground underneath them right now. So keep doing it. Okay. So wait, if we do this and you guys do that and then you lean in, we got a group hug visually. So you got to come in this way. Wait, oh, wait, wait. No, this no way. it's this, this way. way. This way. See? Yeah, look, look at that. There's a group. Uh, there's a group yeah. hug. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, everybody, you need to check out uh, Blunts and Beans, uh, Alexis and Jolene, Camp Canna. All the information's on there. They'll be yeah. all linked in the descriptions on whether you're watching or listening. Yep, check um, out their TikTok yeah. and when they start up their uh, and our YouTube channel. We have a YouTube channel now at yeah. Blunts and Beans. Oh. Yay. YouTube. All right, so there you go, and YouTube as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, Jolene, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Don't listen. No worries. Uh, I'm glad I could <laughs> you like this. see you as well. MJ, Alexis. I'm always good seeing you. I know. I know. I'm going to send Alexis a message and be like, send me your shirt size. I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. All right. We're getting Alexis is getting a shirt, and then Jolene has to get a fresh shirt. Yes. Is that right? Is it time for the fresh one? I think it's All time right. for a fresh one. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you so much for joining us here on the spot. Um, we wish you guys all the best and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.